Okay, what's this cheerful blinking all about? Well, the Christmas lights, of course, uh, LED-based. Um, and just like house lighting, which is now transitioning uh, into uh, the use of LEDs, um, you can see uh, a lot of innovation actually happening uh, in these lights. Uh, they're obviously computer-controlled. Uh, and more, of course, remarkable, it was basically at a disposable price. This whole line of uh, 90 LEDs uh, sent me back all of $15. So, uh, it's a really good study, actually, in industrial engineering of uh, really low-end products uh, that obviously still have a fair bit of sophistication. So, let's take a look at how they achieve such a low price. So, not surprisingly, it's a little box here that plugs into an electric outlet that uh, undoubtedly has the uh, microprocessor and various controls you just have one exposed button which affects the uh, light patterns that the uh, LEDs produce. So um, you can see that there are some patterns which are relatively sophisticated. It's actually modulating the, the light of the LEDs and uh, so it implies there's more than just simply an off on control for the three strings. Okay, so I just uh, removed the back cover from the control box and you can see the leads that go to the uh, various LED arrays. And of course, one of the very first economies uh, looks like they have a, a friction fit pin. And because there's no positive retention latch shell around the pin, they uh, use some hot glue to secure it in place. Now, it's actually CSA approved, so it certainly meets all the regulatory requirements. So, um, And the shell itself, of course, has been uh, ultrasonically welded, so I'll have to uh, cut it open to, uh, to see further. Well, okay, uh, obviously, this is the uh, protective enclosure has been removed, and it's even simpler than I thought. A single-sided circuit board, and the build board material is called phenolic. It's basically a, a pressed paper uh, with a foil on it versus a, a fiberglass. So uh, it's the absolute cheapest of uh, circuit board materials. So here's an interesting construction detail. Uh, this little controller I see, of course, is on a circuit board of its own. And uh, then, of course, it has to be soldered to the board. Now, you might think there's a connector on both boards, but, uh, of course, in this kind of class of product, uh, it's just two boards. They cut a slot uh, in the main board, and this board just slides through slightly. And then they just rely on the Adaba solder, I think, to uh, make the connection. Now, this is very weak. This is actually would uh, would fracture and have a very poor service life. Uh, but again, of course, by the uh, market this is going into, um, such things are real luxuries. Okay, and uh, the white wire is added. You might ask what that's all about. Uh, as you can see, I was probing around and I had a bit of a, a, bit of a slip, and uh, I don't believe there's any fuse protection on this product, and it uh, vaporizes the trace. Oh, so for completeness, here's the actual uh, schematic. It's uh, not often you can uh, trace something out so quickly. I have AC input plug here. Uh, there's no fuse that I can find, of course, for the full wave bridge rectifier. That's what those four diodes are up to. Um, this is very unusual. The uh, the resistive divider here producing about probably an 8 volt um, AC waveform into the uh, integrated circuit. I have to presume there's an on-die uh, regulator sitting in that, under that blob of epoxy. And of course uh, three silicon controlled rectifiers, uh, very simple uh, devices. It looks like the AC goes right out to the wire there. There's some resistors that we saw buried in the wire. And obviously just sequences the um, SCR and it turns them on uh, for uh, various numbers of uh, AC cycles and produces the pattern. So there you go. Uh, okay, so there's uh, obviously LEDs on the string here, but uh, in a few places there's these little cylinders. And because there's no load resistor on the circuit board itself, I suspect they might have hit it into this cap here. Okay, looks like a part that comes out. And let's see if we can just pull that out. Okay. Um, and sure enough, it's a uh, it's a resistor. So, <laughs> a very curious little construction detail. Okay, have the uh, board instrumented up. Uh, the LEDs have been replaced with just a simple load resistor. So when one of these SCRs fires, I can see it on the oscilloscope. Um, now, because this is a non-isolated design, the output floats. Um, I can't just connect the scope probe directly. If there's no ground. I have to use this trick of doing some math on my oscilloscope. I need two probes. And I put my scope into a, a channel A minus channel B mode. And of course, you can come up here and uh, you can quickly see, of course, the voltage is changing. Uh, this is obviously a blinking pattern here. These little bursts uh, are the blink. And of course, if I was to change the uh, press the button, I'll change the pattern of, of how the LED is being driven. Or, pardon me, the LED array. And you know, it's just cleverness here, right? It's shorter burst, longer burst, shorter burst, longer burst. And there's this one here, which is just the uh, continuous mode, uh, where the LEDs are emulating always being on. 
Oh, no, pardon me, this is not that mode. You can see it's actually becoming... Uh, this is the one where it uh, looks like it's pulsing on and pulsing off, So, uh, which is a really nice pattern, actually, very pleasing. Uh, you can see, of course, there's actually a lot of... Um, uh, I should be switching on the LEDs. They're, of course, not continuous. Uh, a lot of people complain about inexpensive LEDs now because they have this real flicker, which they find uh, hard to take. Um, unfortunately, I guess that is a side effect of uh, using LEDs. So, very good. Uh, no real surprises here other than just, you know, obviously a lot of clever engineering to get these uh, three LED strings to uh, have a little pattern on them, on them and to do it so cheaply.